I just want to welcome everyone. Good morning and good afternoon, depending on where you are. And um, we want to welcome you to presenting the company story, developing an accurate account of company conduct, and refuting plaintiff's profit over people theme. First, um, we're, uh, Judge Marina Corradinas is here. She's a retired judge who presided over the Mass, Co Mass Tort Court in New Jersey for 10 years. She's now a managing partner in her own national dedicated alternate, alternate dispute resolution firm handling mediation, arbitration, and special master work in state and federal courts. Uh, she's a neutral with CPR, AAA, a past executive and board member of Sedona Conference, and the ALA Advisory Committee for Aggregate Litigation. Um, she is chair of the annual Mass Tort Conference with Judge Marina Cordemus, which will be held this year on March 11th in New York City. And I'm very pleased to say that she was recently named winner of the Best Individual Mediator of 2012 by the National Law Journal. Thank you very much, Ellen. Uh, welcome to everyone out there, and thank you for coming. Uh, whether it's pharma or whether it's any products or manufacturing, there are some basic factual issues typical of cases involving mass torts. Um, and the ones that we're going to cover today are going to include uh, the basic uh, manufacturing, the behavior, testing, uh, off-label use, uh, recall, and issues of warning. Today we've given our listeners, hopefully, um, uh, an overview of the many considerations that they can have. Um, I can tell you from the judge's perspective, uh, these are very difficult cases to try. Um, oftentimes in mass torts, um, it's a high-profile case. Um, if you are not an experienced jurist coming into this, I think that's an element that lawyers often overlook. Uh, and don't do things to prepare uh, their judges. That's a big mistake. Um, they'll come in and they'll say, well, judge, we're going to educate you, which always warms up the judge because <laughs> now, you know, you're just totally incompetent. Um, <laughs> and, uh, you know, it's amazing how smart lawyers just say stupid things to judges. Um, you want the judge, uh, in a way, without obviously crossing the line, um, to be a willful participant in this trial and, uh, you know, a good judge will set up teams early on to make sure. Uh, we, it was my focus to make sure that the jurors knew as much as possible. So uh, a lot of things having to do with medical or nomenclature or uh, issues that were complicated, we tried to break down, and that's your team approach with the judge. 
because the more you can have the judge working with you, the more effective your presentation is going to be, and you don't have to go through all these motions and arguments and the rest of it. So I would suggest from the judicial perspective, um, not only should you get to know your judge, but have the judge be a participant in the case. Um, because believe me, folks, the jury is looking at the judge every single minute. Uh, and if the judge looks bored because they don't care about this case, guess what? That's your case. Um, so try to have the judge as a participant. You know, work with the judge, and, and I think that's going to mirror to your benefit. Um, it seems that we have one phone call here. Please address how you would deal with the claim that companies are putting profits over people um, to the extent that um, uh, you've got to face that in the opening. I think we've given you enough tools on a practical level. The prophylactic issues of educating your work population uh, to not have the bad documents in the first place. If you have bad documents, recognize it early on. Meet with your team right up front to know what you're doing. Name them. Make sure there's regular meetings. Have it protected. Meet with the people that you have to do. Um, don't forget to go on the offensive to tell your good company story because that's what you really need to convey to the jury. Um, how you do it, the methodology you do it, within the confines. Don't spend your time on buying into the plaintiff's games of, uh, you know, there's a spoliation or there's a violation or there's an adverse inference. Stick to your game plan and make sure that's the one the judge is going for. Um, and when you have to go to your jury, tell the truthful, believable, and honest story because that's what good people try to believe. Um, they get angry when they're lied to. They get angry when they think that you're snookering them, okay, and they don't like liars. Um, so um, that's my experience, and I hope that was good for the listeners.